So we are here with Miss Christine. Hello. Miss Christine, I want to thank you for being a part of RB3 TV. Thank you. Uh, this is truly a pleasure. I want to thank you for uh, being so open and willing to share your story. Um, now, I kind of want to get how we met out the way. So okay. I was riding down West Tyler, which is a well-known strip in Houston, and I saw you in a wheelchair, yes, sir. pretty much panhandling. Yes, sir. Pulled to the side, and I asked you what your story is. And I asked you, would you be interested in doing this so I can try to get you some further assistance um, due to your condition? Um, and you accept it. Yes, you obliged, okay? So we are here. I want to start from the beginning, uh, where you're from, how your upbringing was, so forth and so on. Okay. Let's get it. Well, I'm Christine Casanova, Christine Smith Casanova. Um, I was born in Dallas. I was raised in Houston my whole life. Um, I was a single child, an only child. Um, my mother was a single mother. Um, I was born with a kidney disease. When I was four, I had my left kidney removed. My white carpals will quit working. I was bleeding internally. Um, I've been through quite a bit. Um, I lost, the, I had brain surgery when I was eight. I got hit in the head with a golf club. Um, I was just standing in the wrong place at the wrong time and a kid was left-handed. And when he swung back, we were just kids playing with some golf clubs and I was just standing in the wrong place. It, it yeah, I had my, brain, my skull was shattered into my brain, so it was a surgery that took, I believe, six hours or six and a half hours to pull all the pieces out. Um, my mom passed away when I was 17. I was also 17 when I got married, but that was before my mother passed away. Um, I'm a widow by my first husband. He passed away in front of me. Um, he uh, lay down in the road and a car hit him. Um, <clears throat> I was left with no siblings, no parents, and no husband, and I was not even 18 yet. Um, so I had a bad spell in life where I was on the streets and I did do a lot of things that I'm not proud of. Um, I got better though, and I met my husband, and life got a little better, and um, then, then I got hit by a car. My car broke down on the freeway Halloween night, um, 2018. I got over to the median, turned my flashers on. I, my husband had an exofit, which is three pieces of like triangle metal going through his leg with screws. And um, so the guy exiting off the freeway said he didn't see anybody. And so he threw me in the freeway and my husband was captivated on the front of his car until he rolled off. He actually walked on his foot for the first time without crutches to pull me out the freeway because I had a fender on top of me and nobody could see me in the freeway. Um, I was life flighted to the hospital where I spent three and a half months in the hospital. Um, I'm sorry because I'm having a hard time placing when I was stabbed if it was a month before the car accident or a month after. Wait a minute, stab? Yeah, I was um, paling some game machines, walked to the liquor store to go get me some, something to drink. I was on my way back, I cut through the park. The last thing I remember was taking a hit of the drink and I woke up in the hospital. They said they found me naked in a ditch and that I was stabbed and pierced in my lung. I, I don't remember if it was the month before the car accident. I really want to say it was, I don't know if it was before or after mm -hmm. the car accident, but it was like a month, like of prior, before or after. So you're already struggling with one lung. So uh, I have one kidney. Oh, one kidney. I've been okay. pierced in my lung. I've mm -hmm. got a plate in my head and I've been hit by a car. And lost the limb. And lost my leg. I've actually, this is um, a skin flap, which is skin they took from my stomach. Because mm -hmm. there was no meat, no skin, and no bone from here to here. So they put a metal rod. I actually have two metal rods. I have a metal rod here and a metal rod here. But they put a metal rod, and then they took the skin from my stomach and put here. Wow. 
and yeah, well, they told me they were going to make me shorter, and when I went to sleep and woke up after the surgery, they were like, oh, well, we didn't make you shorter, but we just used your skin to cover it, so, I mean, but they, they saved my one leg, so I was very grateful for that, you know, mm -hmm. and um, above me, I automatically got my disability, you know, so that was a blessing, because medical bills were probably, I was there for three and a half months in the hospital, mm -hmm. and um Life has had its ups and downs, but I can proudly sit here and say that I had 10 years. I'm right now a month and a half short of two years sobriety. Um, my husband is my biggest supporter and my biggest part of my heart that I have. Mm -hmm. um, I love my cat and dog. <laughs> I love my stepdaughters to death. Um, I'm just appreciative that God seen me when he seen me every time that he's seen me mm -hmm. and that I'm still here. So I'm, I'm just very grateful to still have a life, be able to sit here and talk to you, mm -hmm. um, tell my story. I've, I've even after I got out of TC once and I had a spiritual counselor that took me um, to a men's prison to tell my testimony as part of the church. And I mean... I just know that telling my story, or whether it's here, or in a prison, or in a book, or whatever, because there's somebody out there that needs to hear it because they've been through it, or they're going through something similar, or they feel the same way, and I know that that helps a lot. Mm -hmm. um, I got my GED and TDC, and I got out and went mm -hmm. to college. Can't yes. Yes. I did, I did not finish. Um, we had some legal issues, so we had to move. But but um, I'm proud of who I am, and I'm proud that I stand here today. And I'm, I'm very grateful because I know God sees me, whether I'm on that street corner with that sign telling me that I do need help because I do, mm -hmm. and I'm doing right with it. Or I just I know God sees me no matter what I do because he right. provides for me, and I'm still here, and he takes care of me, and I got to a roof over my head. I, yeah, I had to wait a year and a half for my housing to come through. And yeah, I, I was in the streets and with no lights and nowhere to go and living out my storage. But there was also church people that like helped me get this housing that in the end game of when I was like seriously in the streets, they was like, here, let me give you a place to stay. Because like God always sees you. God always sees. I know he sees me. I know he does. Not just the number of hairs on my head. He sees me. He see me every day, and he provide for me, and I know I'm grateful for that. Hmm. You know, <clears throat> I told you this interview would probably take about an hour because mm -hmm. you asked me how long we're, <laughs> mm -hmm. but um, you mm -hmm. got a story. A, I told you I did a novel. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm a good writer, but I have a story to tell. Man, this, this is amazing. Uh, what I want to do, I want to kind of touch on the sobriety part. Yeah. Okay? So, clean from alcohol or... Uh, crack cocaine. Crack. Ten years, first time. Um, hallelujah, I love my new sobriety date. It's the 4th of July, which is Independence Day. All right. Yo. Now. All right. So, That's this 4th of about. July, which is like a month and a half away, mm -hmm. I have two years sobriety. I'm working on 20 this time instead of 10. Okay. You know? Right. Setbacks are for major comebacks. That's right. So, you know, yeah. That's right. We all have our moments. After my surgery, after this accident, mm -hmm. about five, six months afterwards, yeah, I had hard, dark times. I didn't want to be alive after this. I woke up in a hospital room by myself, looked down, and my leg was gone. I don't remember nothing from the accident. And I'm like, where's Ash? This got to be a joke. You know what I'm yes. saying? Come on. This is... But... Um, it's not something that there's a manual or a script that tells you how to deal with this, how to go about it, how you're going to feel. And at first, I didn't understand why. I'm, I'm so grateful now to be here mm -hmm. and be alive. But at the beginning, I was like, why? 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 Why you should you just, you know? Mm -hmm. I didn't want to. But now, I've, I've made more progress than I ever thought I have. And God never puts more on you than you can handle. Mm -hmm. So... I must be like super, super, like super power strong or something mm -hmm. because yeah. I just don't stop. I don't. You are. I, I want to do a rundown. So we had a brain surgery mm -hmm. at eight years old, correct? 
Kidneys at four. Kidneys at four. Mm hmm. Started smoking crack at what age? Probably about 19. 19 years old. Yeah, it was right after my first husband died. Okay. Lost your first husband. Five, four and a half years of my life there. Okay. Lost your mother. Lost at my At 17. Mm-hmm. All right. No siblings and nobody else no. to depend on. Nothing. You still here. And also lost a limb. Also lost a limb. And I cry about these headaches. And I've been stabbed. That's not and you've been I stabbed. Was and and had skin grafted. Well, that was That's all right. part of yeah, the Yeah, about the about the leg. Yeah, but it was a lot. I had a fractured wrist. There was a lot of little things, but it was, it was different. It's different. Like I should be having a surgery to have this trimmed down, but I'm like, it works, and I don't care what people see. It works fine right. for me. Yeah. So, because if I have the surgery. It's three surgeries once every three months. That's like a year. I can't walk. Like, yeah. I'm good. I'm good. Just how it is. If you don't like it, you know, you can look the other way. Yeah. Now, I also want to touch on. I'm comfortable with me. And I, and I know. I know you are. Mm -hmm. You have. Your personality is. Still good. Is radiant. Still good. Yeah. <laughs> I you think know? so. I, I try. It definitely <laughs> is. It definitely is. Um, so. Right now, okay, you were speaking on the housing. Uh, it took you a year to get it, correct? So once we filed for it, mm -hmm. and it was actually on record, I actually was switched from Houston Housing Authority to Salvation Army, who pays my bills directly. Mm -hmm. But I went through like a whirlwind where we were just like, I went through, I don't know, like six different case managers before I got housed into the apartment. Mm -hmm. It took literally over a year and a half. The guy that helped me at the center is actually the same guy that gave us a place to stay in the end when we had nowhere to go. Mm -hmm. And um, he literally told me when the year had came up, he's like, you know, it's been a year since you applied for your housing. People, so other people who had applied after me was getting theirs in a couple months, but I don't, I don't know. I know there was a lot of people waiting for housing inspections, and there was only so many inspectors, is what I was being told and stuff like that. But um, once I was switched from the Houston Housing Authority to the Salvation Army, I was more quickly um, put into the, the place, you know? Mm -hmm. It took a lot less than what it did trying to wait for Houston Housing Authority, because we, I mean, we went through a lot. Not saying that it wasn't, it, it was absolutely worth it. I know. You look around my house, it's not much. Mm -hmm. And it's really small, but it's mine. And, and, it's, it means and it's cozy. So it's much. Cozy. It means yeah. so much to me mm -hmm. to just know that I have lights and I have a place to go that's my own and I'm not in the weather, you know what I'm saying? But like I said, and I it's do. it's clean. <laughs> yeah, I got to put that out there. Thank you. I got to put that. It's clean. Thank you. Now, look, look, and you look, you can tell when they clean up when you have a company. So you might have tied it up, but you ain't do no deep cleaning, so it's already no clean. Deep clean. Yeah, there's, I know. I know no you, deep yeah. Clean, I swear. I can tell this place been been clean. <laughs> so, yeah, before I can way before I can. Yeah. It's it's nice in here. I I'm comfortable. Thank you. Okay. Thank yeah. You. My house okay. is your house. All right, all right. <laughs> now but it feels good to be able to say that I have a place now, right? Because so long my life has been disheveled from this. Uh, we lost his job, our our car, our house. I mean, after everything, we lost everything. Now his know? job, you're speaking on your husband. Yeah. Now this is your husband of twelve years. We booked next month on the fifth will be twelve years. Yes. Now. How long ago did this accident happen? Two thousand eighteen, but we've been together since two thousand nine. And that's what I want to focus on. So two thousand eighteen, right? Yeah. And it's twenty twenty four. That's six years. You got some men would have left the woman. You got some woman, some women who would have left we've the man. We've had our ups and downs, and, and our it's, ups and outs, but it's always there's only one, and we all know that there's someone out there for everyone. Yeah, right. But there's only that one one. Yeah. And that's my one. And he and he is very supportive. That's my plus one. Right I, I believe he is. That's he is a good guy. One. We're gonna get you on that camera too oh, later you on. Out, <laughs> the rest of <baby. laughs> <rest on. laughs> look, look, and look. Now I was telling my friend earlier, I said, I'm always gonna give a man props if he's a decent looking guy. 
You got you a nice looking man too. Come here, man. You know what I'm saying? You you ain't got look. You ain't got no crumb snatcher. So you you got you somebody. Else. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. I do yeah. appreciate the compliment. Yeah. Oh I yeah, know man. I got good taste. Yeah, man. Yeah. I, and I think y'all compliment each other well. <laughs> Thank um, you. So I, I I do it. Want I do want to touch on this this um I guess the government assistance and how I guess hard it is and difficult for people in your position, my position, others, you know, who have, you know, gone through certain things and like your food, okay. your, they took your My food disability? stamps, I've been fighting for my food stamps for about a year now trying to mm. get them back. I'm disabled. I cannot work and I needed these food stamps. Mm -hmm. um, uh, last year they were giving me a $50 healthy card from Medicaid for food. Mm -hmm. This year, between well, not just the healthy card, they took my healthy foods card, they took the flex card, and they took the over the counter for every season, which is four times a year. They took all that away and gave me 144 a month. Now, you can use it for other things now, like gas or rent, mm -hmm. but um, basically, it was, for me, it was I had to choose between like vitamins and laundry soap and toothpaste versus food. Mm -hmm. So I just spend my 144 on food because I'm not getting my food stamps right now. So um, I just feel like because you're supposed to get more every year that you're on the Medicaid and Medicare, which I have both. Mm -hmm. um, this year, it's just like, I feel like I got less. And um, so, but, you know, I do get disability and disability get it goes up yearly, mm -hmm. and I went from four twenty to four thirty three this year. Mm -hmm. A whole thirteen dollars it went up. So I'm grateful for this. You know, don't get me wrong, but four thirty three is not to live on. Right. Not I have a dog. I have a cat. I have a husband. I have a stepdaughter. I I have a house to provide for. I have light. I mean, I have lights that I pay. I have Xfinity that I pay. Uh, TV channels. A phone. I mean, light. More food because 144 for food is not enough. Mm -mm. Um, there's 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 plenty I could complain about, but I'm you said it. I'm I'm, mm -hmm. I'm a happy person, and I'm really just I'm grateful for what I do get. But it is it is such a struggle. I mean, especially on top of this, mm -hmm. I feel like sometimes I'm not that I'm limited, but that I feel sometimes I'm more burdened. Mm -hmm. You know, and I don't want to be a burden. I've worked for my whole life mm -hmm. until I couldn't. You know, I'm just, um, I'm just normal, and I'm just a human, like anybody else. And mm -hmm. we've all had rough times, and I've just had a few more than others. But let me tell you, there's people out there with a way worse story than mine. Mm -hmm. So you know, um, again, I'm grateful. You know, now being, I'm just being grateful, grateful is, is being grateful is cool, and that's that's. Fine and dandy, but mm -hmm. the reality of it is, is that you cannot survive off four hundred dollars a month. No, and 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 I, I love that about you yeah. that you are grateful and you speak highly of God. I can only and, wash clothes once a month, but that that yeah. one chore alone is like yeah. fifty, sixty bucks every month. Right. Yeah. That's yeah. that's that's not including dog food, household mm -hmm. items, my bills, none of that. And that and that brings me to how I met you. Because panhandling. panhandling. Yes, that's you right. I in your help. wheelchair with yeah. the sign, mm -hmm. I need help. Yeah. Take us through some of that, like, I guess the ups and downs, smiles and frowns of you being out there in the middle of West Time or, or just out there. Sometimes people, and I see it every day, the goodness in people. I believe there's more good in the world mm -hmm. than there is bad, but there's bad. Mm -hmm. And... I mean, I see the people that frown mm -hmm. and are talking in their cars and, you know, mm -hmm. when they are uh, laughing, you know. And I've seen kids roll down the windows on the bus and yell stuff out the bus at me as they make the corner. But, um, you know, I'm not, I'm not, you know, I'm not taking it as personal as they think I am because everybody's entitled to their opinion and it's not my place to sit up and say what you think or what may affect you because some people got, you know, people that they love that are like this and they feel when they see you but there's, 
there's some people that just are like, you need help. You look fine to me. You know what I'm saying? I need help. But, you know, I get it. Everybody needs help. We all need somebody sometime and some kind of help. That doesn't mean that you should put other people down and make them feel bad when they're just out there saying that they need help. Mm-hmm. I'm not telling you I'm homeless. I'm not on drugs. Um, I'm just saying I need help. And that it's, 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 it's difficult for me to do things, you know, whether it's moving around. Did you see how long it took us to get from up there to back to our house today? Mm-hmm. It's, it's not easy. I don't have a vehicle. I don't have a vehicle. You know, I take Metro everywhere. I told her in the car, I said, I said, man, Christine be getting it because in a wheelchair. No, no, he's pushing me. That's why I'm getting it. The only reason we're booking it is because he's behind me pushing ahead to to his best ability. Right. That's it. If it was just me pushing and having to go backwards up the hills and stuff. Mm -hmm. Nah. He's a blessing. I want you to shut the people down because I know people are going to jump in here and say, oh, well, she's just missing her leg. She can do a sit-down job. She can work from home. She can do this. She can do that. I know that when you have a situation like that, it's not just the missing limb. You have other complications that occur or that have come along or whatever, that, or the health issues or whatever. I can't even Tell walk us. up my own steps on my own. Mm-hmm. My husband has to pull me backwards on a chair or I have to, I have to literally use crutches, which I failed on the porch before. I mean, mm-hmm. just... I know y'all think it's just missing a leg, but it's not. I've literally tried to get out the gate and been pushed out my chair just by momentum thousands of times. Mm -hmm. I mean, standing up, I can stand on my leg. Mm -hmm. I can, but it's only for short periods of time. Like I said, I have a metal rod here and Mm -hmm. staples going all the way down. And then I have my skin flap with another metal rod here. Mm -hmm. And with this being missing, it's just like... Everything is thrown off because I feel like this side's a little heavier, but it's mm-hmm. also my strong side though, because mm-hmm. it does everything from mm-hmm. pulling me when I'm sitting in my chair. I use my leg to pull myself while I will, which makes momentum a little easier for me. Mm-hmm. But um, like our, our our apartment is super small. Mm-hmm. I have literally was getting up off the toilet to get back in bed and fell backwards and busted the toilet into a thousand pieces. Water was going everywhere. Because the toilet's so small and I, I can't maneuver. I We spent a good uh, two, three months when we were first here. I didn't even have a shower chair. So that was really difficult because I can't stand up in the shower. And I would, um, if I try to get on the side, like I slip off because it's wet and I'm wet. Um, it, I can't get into our closet unless I'm at an angle. And um, it's just really difficult for me to get my own clothes out of the closet. Um, would I can you, I can do some stuff. Though. Would you say the bathroom, like the bath, going to the bathroom, showering, uh, using the restroom? I would stopped that, using my it, crutches altogether after I broke the toilet, and I only go in there. I don't care if I scrape up the walls anymore. Yeah, they have insurance for all that. I'm more worried about not falling, not having to pay for a toilet, not busting yeah. my head. So was, would would you say so. that was one of the hardest transitions since losing your leg? Okay, there's a lot of hard transitions when you lose. Talk to me. I'm listening. I remember being in the hospital, and I remember friends coming to see me, and I remember their kids not wanting to touch me, not wanting to be around me. The look on little kids' face when you know they never seen nothing like this. You can tell that look. like, And then I just think that sometimes I'm the things of their nightmares, you know? Mm-hmm. And they don't understand, you know? But my stepdaughter was amazing, though. She crawled right up in bed with me and pushed me all over. And even into the wall of the hospital. Mm-hmm. She, pushed me. she pushed me everywhere. But um, I think it's more or less, for me, the hardest transition is not just how I feel, but how people see me. Mm-hmm. I'm not less. I'm stronger and I'm better, believe it or not. I'm I'm more capable or more willing because I have to, because I don't have a choice. What am I... Okay, when I first got out and I was first doing good, trying to walk on my crutches and stuff, one leg in my crutches, I fell in the middle of a field, empty field, and with nothing around, 
And there was no way for, I couldn't stand up on my own mm -hmm. from just a flat surface. And I tell you, I did learn how to put my one leg underneath me and jack myself up eventually. Mm -hmm. But not that day I fell in the woods, I had to scoot against the tree, find a tree, mm -hmm. and then get up from there. But there, there came a point where I fell again. I fall all the time still to this day. I'm not perfect. I'm missing a leg, you know. Mm -hmm. But um, I, I fell, and I'll never forget. My leg went. I put, put it up underneath me, and I pushed myself up. And I was like, you can do whatever. Just don't give up and just keep trying. And you can do it, you know. Mm -hmm. How, you can't expect other people to believe or have faith in you if you don't have those things yourself for yourself. Thanks. I got you. I got you. Um, I kind of want to touch on on the uh, on the incident itself and what happened to the driver. That, oh wow! That I'm hit. so glad that you asked that question. Mm -hmm. I am not kidding. Mm -hmm. So it was um, a Mexican, mm -hmm. I believe. And they were crying, and my husband felt so bad because you should have seen him. He was crying. That's great that he cried, but he told the cops that he had insurance. Mm -hmm. He did not have insurance. Mm -hmm. He got to drive home with his family. He didn't do any jail time and didn't pay a dollar in fines or fees. I did not go to court, and this man never came to the hospital. Not a phone call, not a flower, not a, are you alive? Nothing. I'm just saying that I guess there's people out there like that, but if I hit somebody and took their leg and almost killed them, I would have at least went to the hospital to make sure they lived. Mm -hmm. To say, hey, I know I don't have insurance, but if there's anything I can help you with or do, let me know. Anything. I'm mm -hmm. sorry. I didn't mean to. I don't know what he looks like. I think that's for the better. Mm -hmm. I had, like, all the information from the accident. Probably still do somewhere. Mm -hmm. But... That's not my place. And at first, I was mad. I was mad. I was like, <laughs> he just got to walk off scot-free. But you know what? That, again, that's not my call. You know, I didn't place this stuff in order, and you never know what's going to happen. My car broke down on the freeway. I pulled over to the median. I turned my flashing lights on. I was going to push it off so it wouldn't get towed because we were right there on the exit ramp, you know? Mm -hmm. And the car exiting off said they didn't see anything. Blinders on the side. I don't know where you were looking since you were exiting off, but since you didn't see anything, you put one person out there with a fender on them with no leg, and you have the other person on your hood who has to roll off. And now that you're aware of what you've done, you just... I just feel like he took no responsibility. Like, he didn't have the insurance. He didn't do jail time. He didn't have to pay anything. He didn't even have the decency to check in with me to see if I lived or, you know what I'm saying, mm -hmm. to, to, to let me know anything. You know, that's, I felt like that was kind of wrong, but. Extremely low. A little. There's no words for that. A little. Um, so, his name I mean, you, did you just try to forget everything about him? Baby, do you remember what his name was? I don't. Okay. I don't. I don't remember what his name was. So he wasn't intoxicated or anything? Uh, Texting and driving. They Texting and driving. Mm -hmm. Wow. Thank you, Lorenzo, because I needed that. I needed that. that that's, that's, that's big. If you have walls that are white when you exit off, you know what I'm saying? And you're exiting off, so there's nowhere else to look mm -hmm. but where you're exiting. Mm -hmm. You, you should going. still see whatever right. is in the peripheral of, like... But see, but some people don't... are too busy. Right. Some people don't have peripheral vision. And also, and, and, and then, again, texting and driving. And then I was it's, upset with the cop that wrote the case because I was mm -hmm. like, well, you said he had insurance at the scene. Well, mm -hmm. he had insurance, but it was not up Valid. to date or something. So he probably had fake insurance. So, so like a, he got off, and you wrote it up that he had insurance, mm -hmm. so... You know, we're in the hospital thinking, okay, everything's good, you know. I'm going to get my disability. He's got insurance. It's going to be okay. My husband lost his job. Our car was totaled. Mm -hmm. um, this was just a nightmare. Mm -hmm. This was just a nightmare. I mean, I've been through things, but this was seriously a nightmare. Yeah. Okay. Uh Have you ever considered doing a civil suit? 
against these these people? Two years is the maximum. Mm -hmm. And I'm um, gonna be honest, I don't, I don't have money for this. I tried to call lawyers in mm -hmm. the beginning. Like I said, I was in the hospital for about four months almost after the accident. Mm -hmm. um, after I did get out, the first few months were rough, and then I did have a backslide. Mm -hmm. So by the time I was really putting more effort into looking for another lawyer, um, you only have a two-year period mm -hmm. for this, so um, time was up. Wow. And and honestly, on that, I can't be mad at nobody but me. You know, I, I know I had a lot that I was dealing with or going through mm -hmm. or that I was in the hospital, but I don't have the money either to just throw around for lawyers or to, to follow suits because basically he's out of a job and I have nothing and mm -hmm. we have to survive still, you know, and it's difficult. Yeah. And then depending on that person's financial status as well, I guess if you're not, you and know. He had nothing. I mean, even mm -hmm. if I did sue him, I'm going to get what, his wages and garnishes from work maybe a little? Mm -hmm. and, and not saying that that wouldn't have been nothing. I'm an appreciative person. Mm -hmm. I will take any help I could get, but I don't really feel like he was ever willing or wanting or intending to truly kind of give any help. As far as the situation that he caused, you know, I, I told you I was gonna watch my language <laughs> when I was. <laughs> when I've I done my so interview. good. Okay. No, I'm you, so serious. You, you, I've done so good. Not you, one curse You've done word. wonderful. No curse words. And, and I think I've done pretty good too. But fuck him. I'm just okay? gonna say that. Amen. And, 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 and everything he stands for because, a man. Go down. I'm really. kind of at a loss for words man I mean the guy didn't even come and see you no, uh, didn't no. send a call nothing no, like nothing. and for me <clears throat> that's just not in my spirit um, it's not in my spirit uh, that's that's crazy um, the moment and I think you spoke a little bit on it earlier but I kind of want you going more in depth the moment that you realize that your leg was going to be amp amputated. So did they have to amputate? Or did um, they actually so come? actually did at the scene before they life lighted me, my mm -hmm. leg was hanging on by one piece of skin and the tights that I had on. Mm. So it was just kind of flopped there between the, the tights and a little thin piece of skin was the only thing holding my leg on. Okay. Um, when what I was woke the up like a couple days later in the hospital, uh -huh. There was about this much leg, and we all decided that I wanted my disability because this was too much. Right. So I told them to take the, the inch and a half or whatever they needed. All right. Um, the, the pain level at that time. Okay. So were, were you in not, shock, or were, did you feel all of that? I don't remember really anything from okay. it. I remember barely vaguely talking to my husband. Mm -hmm. And that's it. I don't remember the life flight yeah. ride. And okay. I, I don't remember much. I literally remember a few. I remember talking to my husband mm -hmm. in between. After the life I at, at the scene of the crime, I remember speaking with my husband. Not very coherently what we were talking about. Mm -hmm. He's told me since in detail what it was. My leg. Baby, don't let nobody run over my leg is what I was telling him. And my leg was already, you know, mm -hmm. halfway off. He didn't. I didn't know. You know, and um, so, but um, when they got me to the hospital, I remember being in the room and standing up the lights and my husband was on my side and I was trying to talk to him, but they had a, a tube shoved down my throat and I couldn't speak. So that was upsetting me because I didn't understand what was going on. And then the next thing you remember, I woke up in the room by myself in the dark and I was just like, seriously? So they yeah. couldn't try to reattach it? So no, this one was like, like I said, it was just, it was severed basically at the scene. I was standing in the, in the middle of the back of my trunk when he hit me. And I guess this leg caught most of it. But like, cause I have a scar that goes from like here to here on this leg too. But I don't remember. I have scars all up my leg from the, the second rod. But I don't, I don't remember a lot of, um, the beginning days were just, I, I guess they had me highly uh, no medication. Yeah. <laughs> I know after the surgeries, I was on 
so much medication in the hospital. Uh, they had me on everything, including a weed pill. I was mm-hmm. like, you don't want me to go off on the nurses. So I'm going to just, mm-hmm. just come on, take the edge off, please, because I'm already in. But they was giving me a lot of medicine, and I will never forget the day I went home. Mm-hmm. And I didn't have money to fill the prescriptions, and I didn't have Medicaid at the time. I had nothing. And I had no more of the medicine they were giving me there, you know. So the day one, I was like, oh, my God, can we please go back to the hospital? I thought I was ready to go home, but it was the pain. Um, like, the where they gave me the tummy tuck mm-hmm. and took the skin for down here was so tight. Mm-hmm. We pulled. Like, it hurt so bad um, in my sleep. I, I couldn't sleep. I would wake up and cry in my sleep. I, could, I just couldn't sleep. Mm-hmm. I couldn't sleep. Um, the first time I went number two, mm-hmm. oh my god, mm-hmm. oh my god, after the surgeries and everything, it was, I've never, that was like something, uh, Undescribed. yes, mm-hmm. oh my god, that hurt so bad, especially after the tummy tuck, because my stomach was pulled mm-hmm. so tight, but I hadn't used the restroom on my own in so long for my surgeries, it was, it was bad. Now, this is what I do want to talk about, and this is something I know the ladies are more interested in than the men. Your love life after this happened, how did that change? How long did it take you to want to even be touched by your husband or whatever? Like, take us through through that after something this traumatic. It was a long time after that before we were even able to try anything like that. Um, when I first came home, I was still using a bedpan. <laughs> I couldn't get up and go to the restroom on my own. Um, so it was a lot of just laid up healing. A lot of laying up healing. But um, I love my husband and I love life mm-hmm. got back. Just fine. Just fine. Okay. All right. I, hey, I'm with that. <laughs> I'm with that. Okay. I'm like, it's getting I'm, with that. I'm not going to tell y'all. Uh, <laughs> hey, you, hey, you all right? Hey, yeah, that, that, that was enough. You know what I'm saying? I, I had to bring it up because I know people wonder, you know, and yeah. they well, wonder. it's so. really hard, you know, because mm-hmm. there's still certain things that I can't do. Can't, you know, like, yeah. I'm, I'm, and <laughs> technic- technically, if you see me, I'm uneven. Mm. Yeah. Like, yeah. this is so hard to balance. Yeah. 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 Hey, but you can, hey, make it, <laughs> I'm pretty sure y'all, yeah. Oh, yeah, because he's still here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so, uh, we have a, uh, I, 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 you know, the reason that I really want to do this was because one of my main missions behind these videos that a lot of people don't, well, if you know me, you know what my mission is. But a lot of the people that follow me, they I think they just think I just do these videos just for, just to, I don't know, for fun, okay? My whole goal is when I see somebody like you and others that are out here struggling is to get you guys financial assistance and I choose to use the internet for that okay because the internet is so broad and there's really no limit I mean somebody in China could watch this tonight you know as soon as I drop it you need assistance okay I don't care about your past all right we've all nobody's perfect okay now, I know I'm far from perfect but I've been working on my life others that I know are doing the same thing all right Amen. So I'm not holding it against you. I'm sitting here in front of you right now, and everything about you has been nothing but positive. Okay, you've been truly transparent. Your cash app, you see I was hard on y'all today, you and your I husband. got it done. Got the cash app done. I got it done. I, I got want, it already. Do you know the cash app by heart? Um, two Casanovas Z. That's right. Okay. I am attaching your cash app to these videos. All right? Mm-hmm. And that is for the viewers who want to send or donate to you. I don't care if it's a oh, dollar, two you. dollar. Yeah. Please, we, the, please. I'm, I'm working on that. I so greatly appreciate any help I can get. That's right. I, any help. Any help. 
because you know no one can really make it off of four hundred dollars a month. All mm-hmm. right. And like you said, your husband lost his job. Yes. And he's taking care of you. He's trying to deal with this and you know, he has kids of his own and other obligations. So it it it, it listen. And we don't even gotta be here cool, okay? Look, I, I well, like I can afford like maybe the the payments monthly for the car, but I mm-hmm. can't afford the down payment and the monthly payment, like that initial. So you I you, can't you afford desperately need a vehicle. Yes. Y'all need a vehicle. Okay. Yes. I uh, I could like I I literally we do I Going over there and I was like, man, even if I skimp it, I could do like a two hundred dollar payment, but I can't do a five hundred dollar down payment and a two hundred. I can't save that much. I still have to survive monthly. So let's just say somebody was willing to gift you a vehicle. Is there anything that you have in mind that you feel would, you know, maybe your, maybe runs, your dream car, you know, my dream car is Not, different. Well, well, let, let me correct that. <laughs> All right, let me let me. All right, let's get I some clarification. Oh we're not man! Talk about oh that. man! Oh okay. yeah! Oh you, yo, you right. I take any vehicle that runs in AC, <laughs> but right. it, yeah. it's hot in Texas. Hit, yeah, hit very it's really hot. In scorching. Texas. But other than that, it, it don't have to be beautiful. I mean, I don't. I just need help trying to get this. I need a vehicle. We need a vehicle. Okay. We need, it's so important that we get this vehicle. Except our states all the way in Arizona, y'all. What's in Arizona? My stepdaughter. Okay. All right. Now. For the time yeah. being. I'm working on getting her here, too. Okay. All right. Shout out to stepdaughter. Mm-hmm. All right. Trying to get Love you down here. Love my stepdaughter. Right. Love my stepdaughter. <laughs> Love you, Cammy. All right. Okay. Um, for the haters and people that are going to be, because it's going to be, you know, that's the other side, the flip side to the internet. They're going to say, okay, why didn't he go out and get a job? So, Okay, so you want to know? Okay, he had this exofit on his leg. His ankle is broken. Okay, mm-hmm. after this exofit, um, he was hit by the same car. I don't. I don't everybody seems to skip over that because my part of the story is so bad. Mm-hmm. But he was hit and dragged on the car of this of the same accident that I was in. So after having three pieces of metal that are screwed into your leg, you walked on it without your crutches. You were hit by a car. Um, he has a really bad angle and he's actually filed for his disability. Mm-hmm. We have just been fighting it for like a year or two now. Mm-hmm. So we're just like in limbo waiting on that. But really, I don't have home health care provider or anything mm-hmm. like that. So he does everything for me too. Like he does everything. And okay. I don't know what I would do if he had to go to work. I couldn't get my clothes out the closet. You know what I'm saying? Right. I'm, this, I wouldn't be able to get down the stairs of my house. Mm-hmm. Um, just... Just the smallest things, you know? Right. Okay. So I just wanted to get that out there. Yeah. Just so people, you know, before they start saying, well, she got a husband. Oh. Well, he donates plasma as well. Okay. He's not yeah. just doesn't do nothing. No, we, yeah. we are doing everything we can to stay afloat. Right. But it's just but not enough. You definitely need more help. It's just yeah. not enough. And you know what? I'm sorry. I feel so bad for this. Yeah. Because... I think you told me two or three times that he also got hit by that vehicle. Yes. Lorenzo, yes, sir. I'm mm-hmm. sorry, brother. <laughs> Look, I was so focused on, on her, on Christine. Everybody always does. And yeah. Like, and I'm like, man. Well, he had the exo yeah. fit and he was yeah. hit by the car. Yeah. So he's waiting for his disability, <laughs> yeah. too. I'm sorry, man. I, I am sorry. But yeah, no, that's, that's, we went that's, through that's, all, like, everything that we we're supposed to do, everything yeah. that we were supposed to do, like, done it. We're just trying to do everything we can. I mean, it's just it's basically a waiting game, especially with this disability. Well, I want to touch one more thing before we wrap it up. Okay. And this is for people that have gone through this mm-hmm. or people that are trying to overcome it as well. You were an addict. Yes, I was. And one of the hardest drugs out yes, there. Yes, I was. Can you take us through that? I mean, the beginning, the middle, the end. I mean... I I met him Mm -hmm. at the end, and I got clean, and I got married. (laughs) Okay? I can tell you how the end started. The beginning Mm -hmm. was I lost my first husband. This is my second marriage. My first husband, you know, he Mm -hmm. died. He got hit by a car. He's about five feet in front of me, bleeding from everywhere and all. And um, 
my mom died six months later and I didn't have anybody and I my car had blew up like right before my husband died so I was stuck with nothing mm -hmm. nothing no insurance from nobody no I don't get a check on my mom I didn't get a check on my husband mm -hmm. insurance didn't pay for what they thought he had committed so so um you know like um yeah I I didn't know what to do and mm -hmm. I was young and I fell into doing and people that weren't up I did a lot of things and I'm not proud of any of those mm -hmm. things I'm not but I am proud that I had 10 years clean mm -hmm. and I am proud that I have almost 2 years clean now mm -hmm. um I am very proud, I am very strong, and I am very capable, mm -hmm. and you have to want it. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to want, you have to want something more than you want that. And I found my husband, mm -hmm. something that I wanted so much more than that. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, you do a lot for something if you really want it. Do you and remember how it was presented to you? Ultimatum, basically, when we first got together, or you mean the drug? The drug. Okay. Yeah, the drug. <laughs> it was like, yeah, no, me. no, no, no. <laughs> I was like, yeah. Okay. Um. So, um. And I'm a I'm asking it. Let me let me put this out there. I really don't remember like. You... I really don't. I remember like some of the first people, mind you. This was like two thousand five. That mm -hmm. we're talking about when it like mm -hmm. 2006 probably mm -hmm. when I was started, you know. So, mm -hmm. um, but I was I was out there for like three or four years, and it was it was very hard. I think it was only three, but still, it was just um, it's not a life that's not living. Um, you're not paying taxes. Um, you're not a productive part of society. You will not have friends. You will not um, have pri priorities and stuff. You will just have this one thing that is always constantly running you or on your back. And um, that's really not a way for anybody to live with nowhere to go in the weather or no change of clothes or food or whatever situation you may have been thrown into, whether it's being beaten or raped or whatever you've been through because I've been there. Mm -hmm. um, but if you want something more, a better life, uh, your child, your husband, you find something that you want more than that. Mm -hmm. Something that you can value more than that. And you fight for that. And it's not just when you decide to fight for it, that it's an everyday battle. Mm -hmm. Everyday battle. And people, places, and things, you can change the neighborhood you live in and what's available around you or the people that you hang out with. But basically it all boils down to you and a choice that you make and mm -hmm. something that you want. And it's not impossible. I did it for 10 years. I've done it for two now. And... Like I said, I'm hoping to go for 20 this time. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's I'm 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 so happy to hear that. Um, the reason that I wanted you to speak on that is for the younger viewers or even the older viewers, anybody that's still going through it. And I know that the 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 these drugs that they have now, crack is still there, but now it's meth. Now it's um, uh, fentanyl and stuff like that, and it's just it's wiping people out, man. Yeah. And, um, yeah, it is. It really is. You know, your story is just amazing. And you just, just a true uh, testimony, a walking testimony. You know what I'm saying? I yeah, know. Well, and I but, know there's a probably a lot of people that don't believe anything I said. But I swear to God, this is my story. Yeah. And this is my story. Look me up. Christine Casanova. Christine yeah. Smith Casanova. Yeah. I mean, these are true events and facts that I have paperwork on. This right. is not made up. Nobody can make this up, dude. There's, I've been through so much. You couldn't make this up. Also, as, as far as your kidney is concerned, you because okay, you uh -huh. had one removed, correct? Mm -hmm. So, have you ever had to go through dialysis or anything? So, I actually wet the bed for the longest time growing up. Mm -hmm. um, I couldn't control my bladder. When I would relax, it would leak, which mm -hmm. would be mostly at night when I was sleep and relaxed. Mm -hmm. And, uh, 
Yeah, so um, I was supposed to have another surgery done on my kidney when I was 16 because at the age of four, my tissue was too thin or mm -hmm. something. And um, I never had that surgery, but um, I, I'm okay. I mean, it, it's true. It's been proven that you can live with one kidney, and I have one kidney that is good and functional. Mm -hmm. I do, you know, drink every now and then, but I, my kidney's good. Okay. All yeah. right. All right. So what's up? What would you say to people that you see that are broken down on the shoulders of these interstates, these freeways, these highways? Don't get trying... out of your car. Do not get out of your car. Mm -hmm. um, stay in your car. Call for assistance. Call for a, a, a cop. Uh, call for a tow truck driver. Don't get out of the car and don't think you're safe because you don't understand how many times prior to this that we have ran uh, out of gas or broke down or something or needed to jump and we're in some danger like situations just on the side of the road and you don't just it's very dangerous it's very very dangerous and that if you do break down on the freeway stay in your car to call for help if you have to get out get out against the wall um just please be very very careful Right. Is there anything that you would like to talk about that we haven't touched? I'm pretty sure it's a well, lot more. Well, <laughs> I don't know if I've touched anybody out there, but if I have, I do want you to know that I love you and that Jesus loves you. And to not give up no matter what you're going through or what your struggle or your situation or what you're having to overcome. Just know that God's got a plan for you and that, that you can. You can. You can. You just have to want to and never give up. All right. All right. I know that's right. I love that. Um, Christine, yes, Mrs. Right. Casanova, <laughs> I want to that's me. It's Casanova. thank you so much for providing me with this content. The, your story, just will it. I mean, this is, this, this is amazing. And, uh, you know, we're definitely going to push. We're going to push this video. All right. Okay. So we're working on this ASAP. Well, you guys, thank you so much for tuning into my story. Lorenz I love you all. If any of you help, I just want you to know that I'm very grateful. Oh, did, husband. Did, did Lorenzo, Lorenzo, you want to hop? Okay. No, Good. I'm okay. All okay. right, you all right? Okay, Lorenzo, say you all right now. Okay. <laughs> all right, we out.